Hello, today my topic is going to be on the rabies virus, or also another name, lice virus. So the outline of today, we're going to be going over morphology, the life cycle, symptomology, today's treatments, and a new target treatment plan using a revolutionary uh, receptor. Let's go over rabies morphology first. So the rabies virus is family of the rhabdoviridae, and its genus is the lysovirus. It has a characteristic bullet shape, and it is an enveloped virus. Its genome is non-segmented, and it is also a negative single-stranded RNA virus. We will go over the difference between a positive single-stranded RNA virus versus a negative single-stranded RNA virus. It does encode five proteins, M, P, N, G, and L, but for this presentation, we're going to be focusing on the G protein, the glycoprotein that surrounds the virus itself. It does have a helical ribonucleotide protein core, which means it has N proteins that are surrounding the RNA genome. The characteristic of this negative single-stranded RNA virus is that they require what is called an RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. What this means is they basically use an RNA template to make an RNA, temp, uh, RNA setting. Um, it is a zoonotic virus, which means it's transferred from animal to animal. It's also a uh, neurotrophic virus, which means it uses neurons in order to propagate. The mode of transmission for the rabies virus is through salivary secretions, and its mortality rate is approximately 100%. So very nasty virus. Don't want to get infected with it because it's almost 100% uh, fatal most often. Um, so we're going to go over the rabies uh, uh, translocation. Basically, what the first thing it does, very simplified, may I, may I say, is that first of all, if you want to travel through the central nervous system, what we do is that um, the dog will bite you. If the virus will travel through the nerves, to the spinal cord, and up into the brain using retrograde axonal transport. Retrograde axonal transport is basically, um, to put it simply, is you're taking the virus, it is absorbed to the nerve terminal end of a neuron, and it basically goes backwards towards the soma, or also known as the cell body. And this will do, um, this will actually propagate towards the central nervous system through this type of um, system. How does it travel away from the central nervous system to the salivary gland cell? So what it does, it transports using nerves again, then it will go to the salivary glands and then be excreted through the saliva. Simply put, but that's all you need to know for this lecture. Now, what is the difference between negative single-stranded RNA versus positive single-stranded RNA viruses? So the only difference between the two is that negative single-stranded RNA viruses require an additional step. Because the positive single-stranded viruses are actually in the correct orientation for a ribosome to bind and translate that into protein. However, from the negative single-stranded RNA viruses, they're in the three prime to five prime direction, which means they cannot be translated into protein from a ribosome right away. What instead happens is they get translated into the right direction, and then that will then be translated into protein. So now we're going to be talking about the rabies life cycle. And so the first thing that the virus does is that it adheres to the host cell surface through various contacts. And then once it adheres, it enters through platinum-mediated endocytosis, and then it's packaged into an endosome. And when it's packaged into an endosome, the viral membrane can actually fuse up the endosomal membrane and then release its contents into the cytoplasm. Once it releases its contents, like its genomic contents, into the cytoplasm with the RNA-dependent polymerase, um, it will first transcribe proteins. So it translates the negative strand into the positive strand and make proteins, 
And then once it hits enough protein, then we'll get to the second step, which is genomic replication. And then we'll have the assembly of the protein that we made with the genome, uh, with the newly synthesized genome, which will come together to make the virions, the premature virions, which will then be exported out of the cell through butter. What is the mechanism that controls the production of mRNA to negative signature RNA? That's what we'll be covering. So first of all, how do we make the proteins? The, the, this is the genome of the rabies virus. We have your five different proteins, and this is actually coded, the else, uh, is actually coded by your RNA polymerase, RNA-dependent polymerase. What we do is that we have these intergenic regions that are between the genes. And these intergenic regions are full of uracils, a huge uracil tract. And so when our ribosome, when our, or sorry, when a polymerase binds to our negative single, our negative single stranded RNA genome, it bumps into this uracil tract. And then it just stuttered back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, because it was genuinely, genuinely confused. And so it has two options. It can either move forward or it can release the mRNA. And that's how we get our different protein uh, segments. So then after we make the protein, how do we make the negative single strand RNA? So what we do is we basically make so much protein not just any protein, an N protein that we've seen before. The one that's bound to the RNA genome that wraps it. Yeah, that one. So we're going to make a lot of that. What that does, it allows the stabilization of the RNA dependent RNA polymerase. In order it, for it to transcribe that positive sense genome to transcribe it fluidly. And then we would do the same. We would just transcribe. After we get the positive strand, then through the RNA, RNA polymerase, we then make the negative single stranded, um, the RNA, negative single stranded RNA. So characteristics of radius. I'm not going to go into too much depth, but know that once you get bitten, it gets tingling near the site of infection. And what we run into is actually incubation period. This is when you're infected, but you exhibit no symptoms. This can last from a week up to a month. So it can be a very long time, um, even up to a year in extreme cases. There are two types of rabies, fierce rabies, paralytic rabies. Paralytic rabies happens less of the time. But there's one thing you want to know here. is once the rabies virus enters the central nervous system, that's it. But why is that? So rabies virus has a very low molecular weight to easily cross the blood-brain barrier. However, um, our methods of treatment today are using neutralized antibodies. These neutralizing antibodies are so high in molecular weight, several kilodaltons, that they cannot actually pass the blood-brain barrier. So those treatments, in order to neutralize the virus, they won't work if they pass the blood-brain barrier because the the antibodies are just too big. So the treatment of rabies is very time dependent before it crosses the central nervous system. But today, my article we'll be discussing is focusing on an MGR2 receptor that is found on the host. So here's the article if you want to see where to find it. This is all the information you'll need. The goal of this article is to determine the relative importance of the MBR2 with the rabies virus. So here are definitions. MBR2, basically, it's a G-coupled protein receptor, in short. An ectodomain soluble protein, literally a protein that can bind to an ectodomain of um, a transmembrane protein. That's a good um, transport is basically um, the transportation from the nerve terminal to the soma of the neuron. Then we're going to be talking about one of the experiments that they done. So they use R siRNA sequencing and overexpression of mglr 2 receptor. So they took different cell lines 
And they basically made a specific siRNA that will target the mRNA of our mGlur2 receptor. And what that did in the variant um, cell lines is that it did knock down the receptor protein versus the non-specific here. Then they wanted to see whether it is associated with the infection of rabies, and that's exactly what they did here. So this is um, non-specific, um, but then when they had the knockdown of the siRNA in the rabies virus, we noticed that there's very little rabies virus. I mean, there's very little of the um, mglur 2 receptor, and that's also associated with this model as well. So the knockdown is successful for all of them. As well, there's a relative correlation between the mglur 2 receptor and the rabies virus. Um, the last thing that they done was they wanted to see how um, the relative viral teacher when um, you have the mglur 2 overexpression in ATK cells. And they noticed compared to the control that an overexpression resulted in a lot of viral teacher of the rabies virus. So overall, overall, this means mglur 2 is an important cell factor for the rabies viral infection. Then we're not going to talk about this too long because there is a lot of important things I want to go over. But the whole main point to this slide is that antibodies will reduce the amount of relative infection of rabies. In the, various, in the various cell lines. There is one exception here, which is a part of the family of uh, Rabdoviridae, except what they do is they switch um, its G protein with the rabies G protein of the sun on surface, and they wanted to see what would happen if they infected um, that host cell with the, rabies, with the rabies virus. Will it allow the propagation? And what they noticed is that um, when they blocked, when they blocked that virus or the receptor with the antibody, there was very little viral entry, so little infection that was seen. However, when we took the standard VSV virus that had its own G protein, they found that the relative infection was um, essentially 100%, which indicates that the VSV virus is a different. Um, and some mechanism compared to that of the rabies virus. Then, um, so the last thing here is basically saying that our controls have a higher amount of viral teacher than when we add antibody. So all in all, what we can say is that blocking mglur 2 receptor with antibodies reduces the viral infection. Now here's the important stuff. So we're going to be talking about mglur 2 ectoblamine cellular cellular protein and their interactions. So again, we have our different cell lines and our variant VSV and our regular VSV cells. And we're checking the relative infection when we give them this ectodomain cellular protein. It's basically acting the same way as antibody, so it's going to be trying to neutralize that ectodomain, preventing from the virus inviting. And we find that the HEK cells are the least responsive to this active insoluble protein, but um, the MPN cells, which are primary neurons, are the most responsive. The VSV cells without the rabies virus ligand, our glycoprotein, has a very different entry mechanism compared to the rabies virus because we can see that the relative infection is around 100% compared to when we have the rabies virus um, tree protein, tree protein. So all in all, the mglur 2 ectodomain soluble protein neutralizes the infectivity of rabies virus. So we did two different inoculations, one through intramuscular versus intracerebral inoculations um, using different concentrations of ectodomain soluble protein. And we wanted to check whether the survival rate had any difference. So when we did a high concentration of ectodomain soluble protein, we noticed that the relative survival rate was approximately 100%. But however, when we didn't give them any 
extra domain soluble protein. We can see that approximately 15 days after um, infecting them with rabies virus, the percentage of survival goes down to approximately 0%. But the thing to take from this is that we both through intramuscular or intracerebral inoculation, the difference of survival rate remains relatively the same. So all in all, MGOR2 epidemic soluble protein enhances the survival rate in a dose-dependent manner for either intramuscular or intracerebral inoculation. So now we want to talk about the internalization of the rabies virus and the glue R2 effect. So what we can see here is we have a negative control, which means none of these proteins are co-localized together. But for a positive control, all of them are co-localized together at some point. And we want to see if, in fact, the rabies virus does internalize with the MGOR2 receptor, the host, uh, the host receptor, and if it indeed goes through endocytosis and makes an endosome, then in the endosome, in the two phases, the early and late phase, we can use the markers to see, well, do they interact with the rabies virus? So using the endosome, we're going to check are they really co-localized. And that's what we do here. So we're checking, we have the MPR2 receptor with the rabies virus, and then we're checking its um, association with the RAB5, which is an early endosomal marker. And here, as you can see, this is just kind of a close-up, all of these points here are co-localization of all of these together, of the rabies virus. This is all of them merged together saying yes. In the early endosome, there is co-localization of the rabies virus in the MGR2 in the early endosome. Now, we do that with the late endosomal marker, which is RAB7, we do exactly the same thing. And what we find is, again, yes, they all co-localize together in the late endosomal marker, in the late endosome. So what is the, what is the thing to take out of this? The rabies virus and the MGLUR2 receptors are co-localized in early and late endosomes. So what were the conclusions of this study? The MGLUR2 is needed for infection. The MGLUR2 directly interacts with the rabies virus. Not only that, antibodies and ectodermine soluble protein, they block the rabies infection. And lastly, MGLUR2 is co-localized with the rabies virus into early and late endosomes. Future proposals. So one may ask, how does rabies come into our body after the receptor binds? Is there some sort of mechanism that is there that we don't quite understand yet? What is the functional domain of MGLUR2? And are there, are there other cofactors that are involved with the rabies virus internalization? So the take-home message from this presentation is that Lysa virus is a negative RNA virus, um, which is also neurotropic. It can be transmitted through the saliva. There is treatment available, but it is time-dependent at the moment being. And lastly, that MGLUR2 interacts with the Lysa virus, and it is a possible treatment for antivirals. So that was the presentation on the rabies virus, and I hope you enjoyed it.